last book of your Bible, the book of Revelation. And I hope you appreciate our musicians. Anybody that could play a song with that uh, tempo. Everything's, somebody wrote that song that knew nothing about music. And uh, anyway, quite a challenge sometimes to follow people's head and uh, not the f music theory. Take a uh, moment and flip your phone off, you would, and something sounds very goofy on this PA, but as long as you can hear, I'll put up with it. It's not me, it was Ray Jaws and was here before me. <laughs> Revelation in your Bible. Uh, by the way, tonight, uh, before the service, uh, we'll have somebody in the foyer with those little gold hymnals that we use. And uh, during our sing-along, if you'd like to pick up, we got several cases of those and you can pick them up for $10 before and have your own copy, write your name in it. I'd like to eventually get them in the church and in the pews, uh, but we're gonna have a big do not remove, this is not yours sticker on it or something. But for the moment, uh, you could get your own copy. I'd like you to have copies so that you could sing and have good songs in your heart at home. Revelation chapter four, for the next few weeks, I'm gonna be talking about our future, the eternal things of God, where we're going, what's going to happen. I'll try and teach you a little theology, give you some very practical truths, and I promise I won't bore you but uh, any more than normal. But uh, I just, so often we fail to think about the future. Someone said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But could I tell you, that's an eternal statement as well. And this is huge. Let's stand for a moment as we read, starting in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. We'll read just a couple of verses, pray, uh, have you sit down. And we're going to be looking at these couple of chapters for the rest of the hour. Chapter 4, verse 1 of the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. If you write in your Bible, write 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 right there. That's the rapture, the catching away of the bride of Christ. That trumpet, the door, the voice, all that, right out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And let's pray. Father, bless these moments. Thank you for this book. Thank you that we've got the future sealed. And there may be some question marks between here and there, but the end of the story is incredible. And I pray this morning that you would bring us mentally, spiritually into that hour that we might prepare properly, that our hearts might be prepared, that our lives might be prepared. Lord, that we would be ready for that day and excited about what we're going to face in that day. Lord, teach us from your book, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Keep your Bible open there to Revelation 4. Most of us can look back to a time in our life when we, and, and please help me, don't talk, all right? If you, I don't mind you talking outside. I don't mind you leaving. But people around you want to listen, and they don't want to listen to you. Otherwise, you'd be up here. And since you're not up here, they'd like you to shut up. For the glory of God, in Jesus' name, with the love of Christ and the blood of the Lamb. Hey, if you want me to call your name and ask you to leave, I'll do it. I can be as polite, I can be as ugly. I'm really good at this thing. I can be nice, but I can be ugly like that. That's my kids. I can turn from Dracula to uh, a lamb in a minute. No, no, I never have done that. I've turned from the lamb to the Dracula. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is easy for me. And now you set the whole, everybody's tense. You shouldn't be tense, relax. If you had a dad like me, you'd be relaxed. If people understood authority, they wouldn't mind authority. Authorities are awesome. March in time and nobody breaks your legs. Now, where was I? I was talking about things that we regret. There are things that we look back wishing. We look back thinking, what was I thinking? And uh, whenever I think about something like this, I always think, of the time coming out of fourth grade class. We had a modular classroom in the, in the school, a public school I was attending, and they had wooden stairs, a wooden banister, you know, a little handrail, and something possessed me to jump up and slide down that rough wooden banister. And I did get a splinter. And you know, the kind that you don't go to the school nurse saying, could you pull this splinter out for me? 
And I, you know, you look back thinking, what was I thinking? Now, there's a lot of that in life. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Brother Beal back here. We were on the Colorado River. Bunch of guys on a river trip. We should redo one of those someday if we find enough idiots it will go. We're floating down the river, and we're at a bend in the river, and we see this cliff, and somebody says, you know, that'd be a great cliff to jump off. We were jumping off rocks, but we weren't jumping off cliffs. And somehow we got talking, and one of the guys was from Mexico, and he said we could do this, and, and he, Brother Beal, another one of our guys, they climbed that cliff. Now, do you ever notice looking up at something, it doesn't look as big as looking down from something? Now, they got up there. Once the three of them got up there, what they didn't know, the guy from Mexico, he was a cliff diver. He did it for a living. He walked up, looked at this, I mean, right out of the book. And right at that moment, I guarantee you, Brother B was thinking, what was I thinking? <laughs> Honest. Now, he's not a little man, but that cliff dwarfed him. He was a little, little guy up on top of, it had to be a 60-foot cliff. And I remember the first time I jumped off the three-meter board into a pool, and that looked like, you know, I read the book of John as I was on my way down. <laughs> I mean, those guys are way up there, and it hit me. No one ever thought to go down and see if there were rocks in the water under the cliff. And so Fausto, this guy from Mexico, he does this perfect shh. And uh, Brother Beal and Dave that was up there with him, they did the perfect ah! <laughs> Had we not been in the boat looking up, I guarantee you, they'd have both climbed back down when they were looking. But a man's ego, would, well, that's really a terrible thing. In that case, it could have killed him. Or like the girl who, who married a guy because she was afraid no one else would ask. And then she said, what was I thinking? Um, yeah, the guy, you know what? A lot of you guys have thought, what was I thinking? About halfway through boot camp. And you're thinking, what was I thinking? <laughs> uh, anyway, this, um, I would like this morning to transport you, uh, not looking back saying what was I thinking but I'd like to paint a picture for you this morning of where we're headed and I'd like to mentally and if I could emotionally bring you into that so you could from back here get an idea of what you will be thinking what will I be thinking because if you get this thing right here you can fix what's gonna be up here now, these next few weeks, we're going to talk about this because this is, this is the real deal. Uh, tonight, next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about stewardship and the life builders and a little bit about what you can do with money and how to put it away and this and that. And I'm for all that. I'm not against all that. But I'll tell you what, this thing we're about to read about is forever. And it's real. And the government can't touch it. Look with me there at Revelation. Um, I'm going to quickly go through a few things. Revelation chapter 4, and we're going to go through the rest of chapter 4 just real quick. Um, you notice, let me give you some points first of all. Chapter 4, uh, in verse 1, he's caught up to heaven. In verse 2, he's at the throne of God. Verse 3, he looks at that throne. It's like a jasper and sardine, so it's just brilliant, beautiful, radiant throne. And around the throne is a rainbow. And it's like an emerald rainbow. Verse 4, around the throne of these 24 elders. I'll explain who they are in a minute. And on their head, the end of verse 4, they had crowns. We'll talk about those in a minute. Verse 5, out of that throne proceeds lightnings and thunders and voices. Now, picture this. You are caught up in an instant. By the way, if you've not studied any Bible theology, the word the rapture is not in the Bible, but the thought, the principle of being caught away, taken away out of this world, the believers will be taken out of the world in an instant. First, the dead bodies will be raised to meet the living spirits of those who've gone on to heaven already. Then we which are alive and remain, 1 Thessalonians 4 tells we caught up together with them, meet the Lord in the air. So we're all in heaven. It's an instantaneous thing. This body will be given a new body. The Why God wants to resurrect the old bodies, I don't know, but he does. He pulls that wherever they were ashes or they were, uh, you know, drowned, whatever. Wherever a body is, he's bringing it up, reuniting with the spirit. And that spirit is not in a soul sleep, that's nonsense, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. And so that, uh, oh, John Driscoll, was at our first, first, first service of our church, 
Had his funeral a couple weeks ago. John's in heaven. His spirit, his body's at the Wildemar Cemetery. But the real John is up there in heaven right now, as alive as ever. But when the trumpet sounds, this body is going to be instantly changed to a new body. 1 Corinthians 15 says, this corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass, saying death is swallowed up in victory. And God's literally going to reach down and swallow up death and say, there you go. Death can't hold my people any longer, not their body nor their soul. And the bodies will be resurrected in a glorious new body. And the spirit will be reunited, will be brought up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now instantly, now by the way, if you're not saved, if you don't know if you're going to heaven, if you've never accepted Christ, you're not going to be here. You're going to be down on earth and you don't want to be on earth. But in a minute, we can tell you how to be there. Because Jesus saves sinners. But you're caught up. Picture this now. We're caught up and we're brought into this scene and we look ahead of us and there's the throne of God. Around the throne is this rainbow. Above the throne are four beasts, flying creatures. We'll read about in a minute. And then there's angels and there's these 24 elders we'll see. There's lightning and thunderings coming out of the throne of God. Heaven is a noisy, noisy place. Look on a little bit further in chapter 4. And the first beast, we got these four beasts. Verse 6, there was around the throne a sea of glass like unto crystal. You say, what's that? Well, it's like a sea of glass made of crystal. I don't know what it is. It's like a sea. Like a, it's like an ocean. It's like a, a lake. It's just, it's, it's just all crystalled. It's going to be pretty. I know that. I don't know if you can water ski on it or not, but that's what God says. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne are four beasts full of eyes. Verse 7, so the first beast was like a lion. The second was like a calf. The third beast was at the face of a man. The fourth beast was like a flying eagle. These four beasts are flying around the throne of God. Rainbow, voices, lightning, thunder, crystal sea, noise. And the beasts are crying out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. 24 hours a day, only there are no hours and there is no night, so it's always day. Look at chapter uh, 4 and verse 9. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders, what do they do? Fall down. Look, if you saw that, wouldn't you fall down? We're gonna, there's going to be a lot of falling down when you get to heaven. And when they see this and hear it, this is us, by the way. I'll show you in a minute. We're all here. When you see the throne and the crystal sea and the rainbow and the beast and you hear all the lightnings and the thunders and all that going on, everybody falls on their faces. There's going to be a lot of worship in heaven. There's going to be a lot of get on your face time. Look over here at chapter 5, verse 8. Chapter 5, verse 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Look at chapter 5, verse 14. And the four beasts said, Amen. There's going to be some Amen in, in heaven. You know, Amen is a biblical term. Look, I don't mind clapping, but Amen is the Bible way of saying, that's what I believe. I agree with it. Amen is a Bible term. And again, I'm not against clapping, but they clap at nightclubs. Um, is it, you can always tell. So you get around some Christian in the public world and something happens, something, and the guy will say, Amen. And then he catches himself. Oh, I'm not in church. But you can at least tell he goes to a decent church where they say, Amen. Amen says, I agree. That's what I believe. And he's right. That way when the preacher is maybe dancing across some very delicate territory and there's some people saying, oh, I don't know about that. Everybody around him says, amen. He says, well, maybe I'm the only idiot who doesn't believe that. Amen's got a valuable basis for it there. But so in verse chapter 5, verse 14, um, the four beasts said, amen. And the four and 20 elders fell down and worship. Now, three times in that chapter, on their face worshiping, I can tell you this, in the days to come, even though there's no days in heaven, but in the time that passes, even though there's no time, you figure out the terminology. But from there on to eternity, there's going to be a lot of on our face time worshiping God. But look now with me back over where we were a minute ago. In chapter 10, 4, verse 10, And the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. And look at this, they cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy. So here we are. 
This crowd of people before the throne of God, crystal sea, rainbow, beasts around the throne, lightning, thunder, voices, noise, and when the four beasts say, holy, 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 everybody falls on their face. And at this moment, by the way, this is the first moment you're in heaven. You say, what are we going to do when we get to heaven? This is it. This is the very first thing. Now, there's a whole lot more to come. You'll see in a minute he's going to make us to rule and to be kings and priests. If you're a king, if you're a priest, you're to be ruling and reigning and, and instructing. So you've got a job to do when you get to heaven. But they fall on their faces and they cast their crowns before the throne. And then they say, now this is the very first thing you're going to say when you get to heaven besides, whoa, or some other earthly exclamation that hopefully is not a four-letter word. Some of you may have to guard your vocabulary when you first get there. Um, you don't want to use God's name in vain, I can tell you that much. And so verse 11, first words when you get to heaven, thou art what? Worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You know what they're saying? Thou art worthy. Lord, I got this crown. Next week we're going to talk about rewards. But we're, we're going to say, I got this crown for doing things for you on earth, and you've rewarded me with this. But, oh, God, it's yours. You're the one who's worthy of it. I can't, I can't keep this crown. I can't have this crown. I can have nothing that glorifies me. Lord, thou art worthy. That's what's going to happen when we get there. Now, there's a whole lot more, and we'll look at that during the whole month of October. And I don't normally preach series things, but I felt like that would be a good thing to do this month, so we're going to do that. But I want you to follow along with me. We look into chapter 5 real quickly, and uh, I'm going to have to hurry way through too much of this. But chapter 5, look down if you would. We're going to skip a little bit. Of course, the elders are there. I'll explain who they are in a minute. But look at chapter 5 and verse, uh, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain. Of course, that's Jesus. Having the seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So Jesus comes up, goes over to God, the Father at the throne, takes a book out of his hand, and that book has got seals, and you'll read in the chapters that come about judgments and all that. Verse 8. And when he had taken the book... The four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, think about this. We're there on the, at the throne. We're on our faces. We're having harps and golden vials filled with ointment and odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, ointment, like a perfume, is there to make a place smell good. You know these things you have now, you plug it into the wall, and if, if you don't spend much money on it, you can smell it if you get about two inches away and breathe deep. But if you get a good one, the whole room will smell. Your prayer life today is what will bring the aroma to the throne room of God. When you and I get there at that place, we'll be holding these vessels filled with ointment which figuratively or literally I have no idea are the prayers of the people of God I wonder how sweet will heaven be because of our prayer life you know some of your troubles that you face that have driven you to prayer and to sorrow and tears but you've prayed I wonder when we get there and all of heaven is refreshed by the aroma of your suffering if we'll regret our hardships. There's, there's more to this that's, gonna, that's speculation than, than I will go into, but I just personally believe when you pray right now, it will change heaven. Everything you do now matters. You take time to pray for your friends, to pray for the work of God, to praise and worship God. I think that whole thing will be there. See, Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. It's not just money treasure. 
And you know what would be sad? You get to heaven and God gives each of us to hold our own prayer life. And you get a thimble. Just a thought. I mean, that's definitely speculation. Let's look back at the Bible and get rid of Goddard and get Jesus back in here, all right? Verse 8. Um, we had the harps, the golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Verse 9, and they sung a new song. So now we're before Jesus. Jesus come out. And we're singing. It's the first song we're going to sing, as far as we know. Saying, thou art worthy. Same as chapter 5, verse 11. First, you see God, first words out of your mouth. You're, wor you're worthy. So Jesus comes out. The Lamb of God, thou art worthy. Verse 9 to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. Now look at this. The ones who are talking or singing are the 24 elders back there in chapter 4 and verse 4, and that have been mentioned several times since then. And so in chapter 5, verse 9, the 24 elders sing this song, and they say, Thou art worthy, and he goes down, For thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue and people and nation. Could I tell you there's more than 24 kindreds, tongues, people, and nations? Those 24 th uh, elders there are representative, or maybe they're the heads of groups, but right now, this is where you are. Multiplied thousands and tens of thousands and millions of people gathered. There's the throne. There's the crystal sea. There's the rainbow. There's the four beasts crying out, holy, holy, holy. They rest not day or night. And then there's the lightnings and there's the thunder. And then the, the, the people fall on their face and they cry out, thou art worthy, O Lord. And, and I mean, this is a noisy place going on right now. And Jesus comes out and the whole crowd Crowd, multitudes from every kindred and tongue from every era of time from Adam and Eve all the way up to that last person that will ever get saved we're all up there together and it is a noisy noisy place look now with me at the a little bit further in chapter 5 and he says um, in verse 9 and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy and down to verse 11 um, and, I, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Could I just say that's a whole bunch of people? That's you. You want to you circle that and write in the margin, me. If you're saved, that's where you're going to be. And look at verse 12, saying with a loud voice. Now we're all getting in on this thing. Everybody, the angels, the believers throughout all the eras and all the centuries and all the angels of heaven and everybody is crying out, Thou art, or in this case, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then as multitudes cry out with what kind of a voice? What kind of voice? Loud voice. Multiplied millions of people. There's the throne, that beautiful sparkling throne, the rainbow, the lightning, the thunder, the crystal sea, the beast, people falling on their face, crying out, worthy, thou art worthy. And then along comes the angels of heaven and multiplied millions of people, believers and angels, crying out before God, worshiping God with a loud voice. And then... That makes such a big noise. Every creature in heaven and in earth and under the earth. Look at that next line. Look at the next line there. Um, and um, verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and them that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. There again, that's, Amen is a good word. And you got to relax. You can Amen a good song. You can Amen during the choir. Amening is a, has a heavenly acknowledgement. Wow, I like this. And the four and twenty elders fell down. There they're falling down again and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Now later on, Next week, the week after, I'll talk about the judgment seat. Let me explain. There's the judgment seat of Christ where you as a believer will be judged for what you've done for God. Then there's the great white throne judgment where the unbelievers will be judged. The two will never cross. 
My works will not be compared to anybody else's works. You know, who gets in heaven, who doesn't. If you're saved, if your name's in the book of life, you'll be at the judgment seat of Christ reward. We'll talk about that in the next couple of weeks. If you're not saved, your name is not in the book of life and you'll go to hell and you'll be judged according to your sin. And you don't want to be there. Especially since Jesus paid it all and offers you a free gift of eternal life. Salvation's free. It's like a Christmas gift wrapped in the flesh and blood of God himself. He offers himself freely. But this morning, let me talk to you who are going to be at that hour. That dear lady whose husband left her and she stayed faithful to God, though abandoned. On her face, she'll be glad she stayed faithful. That man who struggled through the heartache of a broken heart and a broken life and a broken marriage but stayed close to God and stayed in church and kept living for God and loving God, picture him now. He's on his face. Picture that single mother trying to raise her kids for God. The crystal sea before him, the throne, the beast, the angels, the lightning, the thunder, the rainbow about the throne. The multitudes of voices of 10,000 times 10,000 crying out, worthy is the lamb. They'll be glad they stayed faithful. They'll be really glad they stayed faithful. Picture them as they're on their face, that one who's been hurt beyond description by this world but said, I'm going to trust God, though I hurt. And as they lie prostrate before God, they'll be glad. You see, where we are, we're back here. And too many times we look back saying, what was I thinking? I'm trying to help you know what you will be thinking. I'd like you today to understand what are you going to be thinking on that day. And that day could be this week or this next month or this next year, but that day's going to come because God's no liar. And we'll be there. And that person who was, who, that, that young person who got up on Sunday morning alone, ate breakfast alone, got on a bus alone, came to Sunday school alone, didn't have a family to sit with in church, walked into the youth department not really uh, feeling like they were maybe as much a part of things they wish they were. By the way, let me tell you something. You're as much a part of things as anybody else is. We're all in this thing by the blood of the Lamb. And that teenager, picture them, that young person who got saved on a bus route, some faithful bus worker, led them to Christ at their home or in Sunday school. And as they lie on their face before the throne of God, the crystal sea, the rainbow, the lightning, the thunder, the four beasts, the 10,000 times 10,000 of angels worshiping God, that teenager's going to be so glad they got on that bus. They're not going to care what kind of shoes they wore. They're not going to care that they didn't have a car to drive to church. They're not going to care that maybe that they didn't. You know what? God is going to look down at that young. No, no, let's just be honest here. I can't tell you what God's thinking, but I can guess. You don't think God's going to look with special favor on that young person who struggled to do it? You don't think God's going to look with extra favor and tenderness of heart? Look, he knows everything. And God in that throne, the crystal sea, the beast, the angels, the multitudes of people, don't you think he'll see that widow who kept coming to church when she was so lonely she could die? Don't you think he sees that senior citizen couple? You know, it's great senior citizens. You'll be able to lay down and get back up. <laughs> uh, don't you think he'll see... And he'll remember that senior citizen couple who went to church week after week after week and, uh, and they struggled to get to the church on time or, and didn't always feel good. But you know what? God sees through that multitude of people, the young people who watch the faith of that senior citizen couple. Don't you think God knows? Man, that couple who in their 60s and 70s this morning one of Lyle and Alice Benjamin sitting here this morning. I was visiting with him. He's going to be 90 this year. Alice is only a year or so behind him. Never miss church. As they lie before the throne of God. And the multitudes cry out, worthy is the Lamb. The Lamb of God, Jesus himself, stands next to the throne and reaches out and takes the book with the seals and the judgments. And we all are 10,000 times 10,000 in worship don't you think that senior is going to be glad they stayed faithful? 
Don't you think that person that's been betrayed and hurt and let down by someone they trusted, but they kept trusting him, though they were hurt in this world, don't you think that as they lie there before God, they're going to be glad? Let me tell you some, some things that will never cross your mind there. But Sunday was my only day off. You'll never think that there. You'll never think that there. You'll, you'll never think, oh, you know, I just kind of hate to get up on Sunday and get dressed one more time during the week. You're never going to think that. Not there. No way, man. The crystal sea, whatever that is, the throne, the rainbow, the beast, the angels, the voices, the lightning, the thunder, and the shouting and the worship. No one's going to say, oh, I really wish my son could have done better on that Sunday morning soccer league. No one's going to be there. Ain't going to happen. I can tell you it ain't going to happen. As you lie there with me, I can see Nancy Mitchell, who though today she may not think as clearly as she once did, she's going to be glad she never missed a Thursday night soul winning. Yes, yes. I don't know how many people, Mrs. Mitchell, and, and today already in heaven, Pat Burgess, Nancy's soul winning partner. Nancy's in a home in Los Angeles. And, Pat's up in heaven, but they were soul winning partners for years and years. Pat's been in heaven for some time. Uh, I don't think they're going to regret their Thursday partnership, knocking on doors, telling people about Christ. That faithful giver. The, how about the widow? Remember the widow put in her two mites? You know, as you lie before the throne of God, you're not going to regret what you just did when that offering plate went by unless you regret what you did. Because <laughs> that widow put in her, see, it doesn't matter what you put in, it's a ratio issue. The Lord said of the widow, she gave all her living. Can I tell you just a commercial break? God never chews anybody out for sacrificing too much. God never one time said, oh, no, 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 I, I, I wouldn't want you to die for me. God never says, wait, don't go to that mission field. Your child might get sick. God never says that. Because as you lie on your face and you realize that you put money in that offering plate to help buy Bibles for Justice Ben Wells converts or to help put an assistant pastor uh, in, in uh, Guatemala with the Wilders or, or you help finance the bus ministry or you bought some tires for a bus, you lie there before God. I tell you what, you're not going to be thinking, oh, you know, do you know there are no rewards in heaven for a big bank account on earth? There are lots of rewards we'll get to next week for what you put in the bank of heaven. Well, I think about this, and there's so much. That person, as they bow before the throne of God and on our face before him, you're never going to regret the time you spent reading your Bible and praying. Never. You'll never regret forgiving those who hurt you. You'll never regret loving those who don't love you. You know, as we lie before the throne, picture this, it's noisy. The noise is everywhere. And as you lie there before God, no, here's something no one's going to say. Man, that nursery was so long when I had to work the church nursery. No one's going to say that. No, no one's going to be on their face before God saying, I taught that Sunday school class for 20 years. That bus was so hot as I drove that bus around the valley picking people up to go to Sunday school. You're never gonna, those are words you'll never hear at the throne of God. No one's going to say as they fall on the throne, Lyman Williams is not going to say, wow, that bus route. I'd, I'd have put way too many weekends in that bus route. Those words will never be spoken. Understand today, this is where we're going to be. I want you to look here, and I want you to anticipate, what will you be thinking? You know what? You'll be thinking, whew, I'm glad I tithed. I'm glad I tithed. <laughs> You'll be here thinking, I'm so glad. Can you imagine this? I think this is a parent and a grandparent. Could you lie there? Your pictures were on our face in worship. The crystal sea, the beast, the angels, the, the, the rainbow, the lightning, the thunder, God himself there. You know what? You're gonna, you be, I'll be able to raise up and not have my neck hurt glorified neck <laughs> and look over and don't you think I'll be looking for four 
special people, Josh, Hannah, Esther, and Josiah. And don't you think, when I see them, I'll be glad. I'll be glad I raised my kids in church. I'll be glad those kids have heard me read this Bible through over and over and over and over. As I lie before the throne of God, you as a parent and I, we're going to look around and maybe see a grandchild. And we'll be so glad we stayed in a soul winning church where our grandkids would be saved. Man, he lay there. See, understand what just happened. When we saw the throne of God and the the beasts cry out, holy, holy, holy. You know what everybody did? They all took off their what? Their crowns. And they threw them before God. And as our crowns go, and I look over, and I see my children have got crowns to offer to God in thanksgiving and in worship. I look for the bus captain that took time to train my knot-headed teenager. And I think, thank you for loving my kid. Thank you for teaching my child so they wouldn't be empty-handed before the throne of God. Man, at that moment, I'm going to look around for a Sunday school teacher who taught my children. I'm going to look for that man who taught my Don Bull up in heaven already, who taught Josh when he was in the four-year-old boys' class. And here, from going from kicking in doors in Kuwait to teaching four-year-old boys' Sunday school, I'm so grateful that a man taught my boy to be a Christian man. And look, this is real, folks. If you're saved, you're going to be here. If you're not saved, you want to be here. As you, as you lie up before, you know what you're going to say? I'm so grateful I didn't have my kid in soccer on Sunday morning. I'm so grateful I did have my child in Sunday school on Sunday. And you might say, thank God I had a Christian school so my kid could grow up clean and serve God and have something to bring before their Heavenly Father. As we lift our eyes to look around, we're not going to wish our kid had we wouldn't, have, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be wishing our daughter beat all those boys in soccer on Sunday instead of going to Sunday school on, on Sunday. So we glance toward the people who've loved our kids, taught them in nursery and Sunday school and youth department. We'll be glad. Just think about it. We'll be the lady, the Connie McDowell back here who is for, I don't know how many years, fed 30 to 70 teenagers every Wednesday at her house. Think she's going to regret that? Think she's going to regret as a grandma driving out to Homeland and picking up boys and girls and praying on the bus? You know the big days that you went out and helped on? I got a note from Brandy Ellison. I don't know her last name. Brandy and Ivan, whatever. But um, we met their family on a big day. I remember Marcelo Del Pilar, Manny Tunian's grandpa. Marcello up there at the north end of the lake, filling up balloons and giving out balloons and helping get people to come to a big day. One of those big days is when we reach Joy, now Joy Beavers, and that whole family. Hey, no one's going to regret that. Amen. That big day when you were out um, passing out flyers or you worked on the bus, you drove the bus, you mechanic the bus through the hot summer months, you went to the youth activities when you're tired, you went to, you took a week off work to go to summer camp so the children could have some leadership and you taught them God's word at summer camp. When you're down on your face, you know what? You're not going to wish you'd miss that camp. You're going to be saying, thank God somebody gave me a place to serve. This is real. I mean, we're going to be here. And we're going to be lying in the midst of the masses. As those words come out of our mouth, thou art worthy. As thou art worthy drops from awestruck lips. We'll really feel foolish looking at the angels, the beasts, the throne, the lightning. We'll be really foolish if we remember telling somebody, you know, the Bible's a good book, but I really doubt some of those stories. You're going to be thinking you're really stupid if you doubted God's book. And just in closing, the beast, the throne, the lightning, the thunder, the rainbow, the Lamb of God. We'll think of that song, When Christ Shall Come. 
with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart and I shall bow with humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art oh you won't care about how much education your children got you'll care how godly they got Let's pray. Father, bless us today. Thank you for the facts. And they're getting more and more clear through the news all the time. Oh, there never could have been a one world economy until now, but it's here now. So many stories coming true. So many Bible stories we're reading in the newspaper. And the believers will all be there at that throne. we feed our children at lunch today may we realize they will be before that throne what do we want them to take with them as our spouse is somewhere in that great multitude what will we think oh we'll be grateful that we were faithful that we loved when it was hard We'll be grateful that we hung in there when things were difficult. No one will regret having loved you through tears. And Father, as that day approaches, and we believe now more than ever, it's the signs are so close. May we be faithful, the senior, the youth, the young couple just getting started. May we realize we're just, we're just a moment away from this scene oh that we would be found faithful and if someone here this morning is not saved I pray you'd help them get saved they don't have a promise of another breath of another heartbeat but they do have the promise that Jesus died to save them and they could get saved today if they wanted to and oh what a wise thing that would be to get saved today I pray you draw them to you please in Jesus name amen let's stand together just for a moment with our heads bowed